Uh, I'm Christian Paget. I, um, uh, I did all my study at the uh, University of Quebec in Montreal, uh, in Montreal, uh, in Quebec. And now I'm working uh, since several years uh, in Toulouse uh, in the climate research infrastructure. Uh, and um, so what I will present here is uh, something that has been done uh, uh, by myself uh, with, collabor with some collaborations. And um, uh, this has been done most, mostly in uh, my uh, free time. <laughs> uh, and it, it has a long story because it has been developed over the years. And uh, uh, so uh, I present to you Meteo Alert, which is a significant weather warning system uh, using uh, citizen observations. And um, so the, the concept, so I present you the, <laughs> I updated the presentation to show you the latest uh, image for the France region uh, as of uh, today. <laughs> and um, the concept is a near real time weather amateur reporting of significant weather conditions. So it's really aimed at uh, uh, significant weather. So the system, will not uh, accept or do not provide facilities to report uh, normal observations. It's really targeted toward the significant weather. Uh, it can be with or without measurements so that uh, those who don't have a weather station, for example, can, uh, can report also observations. Uh, it is a merge with surface offshore weather reports. So the system is uh, processing uh, all the surface observations, so METAR, SINOP, voice ship, and the old essay for North America. And uh, uh, so this is merged with the uh, human observations uh, to have a complete picture. Uh, so we have uh, selected weather phenomena that can be reported, so not all of them, uh, with threshold values. Uh, when there are measurements uh, associated with uh, uh, some weather phenomena. Uh, there's quality control. So uh, uh, it is uh, somewhat automated for offshore weather stations. So to at least filter those observations that uh, are really too suspicious. Of course, we are interested here in uh, extreme or significant weather, so we must be careful and the uh, quality control is quite large because if you have a localized thunderstorm and a wind gust, you don't want to uh, filter it. Uh, it could be real. So uh, this is why um, we have a moderator, many moderators from the weather amateur community uh, that can also uh, flag uh, observations. So there's, it's a near real-time map. It is updated at fixed uh, frequency. So for now, it's each five minutes currently. But uh, if you look at the observations uh, in, a, in a listing text base, it is uh, real-time. So the history, it has started a long time ago. The idea was uh, from OrageNet. It was founded in 1996. Uh, we have an image here of the old system. It was covering only uh, France and um, it was only reports from uh, citizens. So no uh, official, no, no um, reports from uh, surface stations. Uh, it was a automatically updated map on demand and the observation listing also. So it was a voluntary developed without funding. Uh, it was a way to gather the weather amateur community and also uh, especially aimed at storm ch chasers, uh, uh, especially, especially for the summer. So it was many, it's, it's why it was called OrageNet, Orage which is for thunderstorms. Uh, it was suspended indefinitely in October 2001. And this is the old uh, form to report observation at that time in uh, 2000. Um, so the when this happened, uh, the uh, replacement service uh, was developed in 
at that time, at the same time, in 2001. Um, it was a, as a child of the Meteo Centre website that I developed since 1994 uh, uh, from my studies and uh, at University of Quebec and Montreal. And uh, it was renamed Meteo Alert because uh, everything has been rewritten because we had, I had no collaboration possible with OrageNet. So it was very rudimentary, a uh, bash based version, uh, manual sign up of new accounts hosted on my uh, 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 department uh, uh, servers. Uh, accounts are needed to participate and there were a few moderators at that time. So it was launched in uh, 2001 for Quebec region and then extended to France in uh, 2002. Uh, but this has been done with a uh, tight partnership with the Info Climat Association, which is a water amateur association in France. Uh, it was mainly based from the former water community of Oranjnet. So mostly storm chasers and also people interested in water in general and also significant water especially, and also in the winter with snow. Uh, so at that time, uh, 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 it was important to have a clutter removal. So I did the uh, uh, an algorithm. I created an algorithm to uh, display observations uh, with priorities associated with them uh, based on observation type, whether uh, it is an official station or human reporting, uh, based on the weather phenomenon reported, also on the values associated with the observation and the date and time of the observation. So all these are taken into account to set up priorities. And um, the the community report the, the reporters uh, there were many uh, the the community was growing very fast and I had performance problems due to the very rudimentary uh, implementation in 2004. So I had to rewrite everything in 2004 2005 to have a better system uh, based uh, on PHP and MySQL uh, at that time. And it was launched in 2005 for both regions at the same time. And during those years, the, there was a partnership with Meteo France with their system called Bayer du Temps and InfoClima also uh, at the same time. And uh, the exporting of those observations, the human observation only, uh, it was it is done in real time um, to Bayer du Temps in XML. And all the accounts and moderation uh, at that time began to be managed by InfoClima because the community is quite large. So we have many available people to moderate. Uh, the accounts were uh, the same as InfoClima. So there is a database synchronization, synchronization between the two systems, but they are decoupled. So they are in case of downtime of InfoClima servers or Meto Alert, they, it still works because there's a synchronization uh, between uh, the accounts uh, on those two, two systems. Then later on, it was extended to uh, the Domtom of France and the neighboring European countries, especially to uh, for the cross-border issues because uh, those living near the borders wanted to see what's happening on the other side. <laughs> So not really uh, human observations in neighboring countries, but mainly automated, uh, especially because the system was not really advertised in other countries and also the interface is not multilingual. So it meets the, uh, the dissemination. Um, so it's all, always a continuous evolution of the system. Uh, so uh, from 2005 and on, uh, I improved the reporting form uh, adapted to mo mobile device display. Um, it can now act as a backend for external services. So I do that for the InfoClima website and their mobile app. So communication is also using JSON and some XML too. Um, it's now being rewritten because uh, I'm upgrading all the system and moving to new servers. So I need to rewrite everything to PHP, PDO, MySQL. Uh, so how it works. So this is the screenshot uh, on the right hand side. So the map is updated each five minutes. 
Uh, it could be delayed because if there are a large number of observations, I'm still on all the servers. Uh, there are performance problems because of the amount of observation. So what I do is that I delay uh, the map update if, it's, if it takes too much time to generate uh, the map. Um, uh, here it is a static map. But uh, in the mobile app and InfoClima website, it's on demand. It's like a open street map uh, view of the observations. Uh, so we have a 12 hour history, it's color based. So the color is the time. So the most recent are in red and the oldest in, are in light blue. So the legend is dynamic depending on the phenomenon displayed and the uh, uh, there's a declutter algorithm uh, also uh, used here, but also used for the backend, so for the uh, external services. Uh, when we hover the cursor over one observation, we can have uh, the detail and the, of the current observation, but also it shows history. And it can mix uh, offshore water observation and uh, human observations. And if you click, it will bring you to the detailed text list listing that will be shown on the next slide. So this is a text listing. So uh, in this text listing, you can see all the parameters associated with the observations, sometimes with values, sometimes no value, um, uh, with uh, colors, uh, the same as on the map. And with the reporter uh, pseudo uh, uh, on the right hand side. And it can be meta snap for offshore observation or static for the InfoClima uh, specific weather stations, uh, automated too. Uh, and those are from human observation. And uh, you can have also road conditions, uh, some details that the user can write. And you can in this display, you can select uh, the region you want to show, the phenomenon you want to filter, the type of uh, uh, reporter. You could display, for example, only human-based observation. And you see that the background is different from a, a citizen observation, human observation, than the offshore weather stations. Uh, you can edit your own observation afterward. Uh, there's also moderation. Uh, access to uh, put some observation on off depending uh, if they are wrong or edit them to remove uh, some part of it and um, uh, so this is the normal display so you can see also some statistics uh, about so this was uh, on sunday so there were at that time at uh, seven o'clock in the evening, there were on that day 4,100 observations, uh, mostly from automated stations, but also from users. It was a quite calm day. So this is the reporting form. So the user will enter information using this form, but only for the website uh, uh, reporting. If they use the mobile app, it's a specific uh, interface, more, uh, quicker and also more graphical based and um, uh, only uh, extra, uh, significant weather as i explained before and they are in different categories so it's easy to report fast uh, so this is the integration within the info um, uh, backend uh, uh, we using the meteor alert uh, backend so we have the same observations so this was uh, yesterday evening. So we have uh, uh, also the reporting as we can see that it can be very quick using their interface. So this can be done here. And um, so this is uh, using MetaWater in the backend. So the declutter algorithm has already worked because they, when the query is done on the observation, uh, they ask for bonding box and I give them the observations using the declutter algorithm and also the priorities associated to observations. So there's also administration panels. Uh, uh, so 
uh, sources of data can be deactivated if there are some problems. Uh, also, the export of the data can be uh, deactivated in case of need. Uh, there are some situations for official weather station because some stations sometimes have technical problems, so we can deactivate some temporarily. Um, there also, there's also an interface uh, for the uh, boiling and ship uh, stations, uh, and we can deactivate even uh, some specific parameters because sometimes uh, some sensors have uh, problems, so it can be deactivated. So for human observation, we can also manage account, so we can suspend them if they are the uh, if they have bad behavior, uh, we can limit on specific values that can be entered. So if they enter bad values, we can uh, uh, forbid uh, the, some accounts to, to enter some values. Uh, and any registered user can flag a bad observation in the system. So some facts and statistics. Uh, something uh, maybe before going there, something I forgot to tell you is that we can also, um, uh, the user can also link uh, their observation to a picture they have taken because InfoClima has their own uh, picture database called the Photo Live. So they can uh, uh, link their picture to their Photo Live uh, picture and it will, there will be a thumbnail shown in the, together with the observation. And there will be a link to go to their uh, uh, photo live picture in InfoClima backend. So we also have pictures that can be associated with observations. So some facts and statistics, uh, MetoAlert and the parent site MetoSant are unfunded. So it's a best effort basis. It's developed only by myself uh, as a side personal activity to my full-time job. So it's supported by a uh, UQAM uh, uh, atmospheric science, uh, Earth atmospheric science department for hardware and bandwidth. Uh, it's supported by Infoclima for the account management mobile app and observation moderation. Uh, so currently we have 46,000 accounts with the Infoclima partnership. Of course, not all of them are reporting observations in Meteor Alert. So in 2020, we had uh, roughly 6,000 accounts participating. Uh, within the last 12 months, uh, the system has processed 2 million observations uh, from France and neighboring countries. So those are observations only in the European region. Uh, so mixing automated and human uh, together. Uh, of course, it's really dependent on time. It's in special distribution according to significant weather events. Uh, in 2020, since uh, 1st January, we had uh, roughly 96,000 uh, human observations uh, entered into the system. So it makes an average of 290 per day and 12 per hour. So this is really, um, uh, uh, we can have days without much observations and other days with a large number observations. So I hope to be able to do a live demo if possible. Uh, I've been told that it could be possible after the Q&A session. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we'll finish there. Uh, it, it was a quick overview, so I didn't show everything, but it's just to give you uh, some the most important information about uh, the system. So uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if people have questions, if you want to speak and ask them directly, just raise your hand or use the comment box, but open for any questions. So we'll uh, Harold. Stop, stop, stop sharing to see something. Thank you, Christian, for your, your nice talk. It's uh, well, um, astonishing what kind of work you do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> on the sideline, right? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> so you, I gather that you have amassed a lot of data over the years. So um, what about storage and, and uh, possibilities for others to use the data sharing formats? Can you can you go a bit into into that? Okay, for now the um, uh, it has been uh, only a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, sharing. So with Meto France, I know they are using it for uh, their vigilance uh, system. So they are using it. Uh, they are looking at the the, the observations. Um, the uh, and with Infoclima, of course, we do real-time sharing. But apart from that, there's no open data access yet. But um, and also because I have limited resources, um, I do archive the maps and the, the the text listings, but I don't archive the raw data because it's I would have to design the system to dump the database incrementally to store that, but I don't have the <laughs> manpower to do it and also the resources to do it so it has not been done yet but this is something i would have liked is to uh, uh, really uh, save all those uh, only human observations of course not the whole probably not the official stations but maybe the official stations would be nice because we all already have all the data processing and moderation applied so I think it's still interesting to have a whole picture. As this is thing that uh, has not been done yet, uh, uh, but uh, I, I would be willing to uh, to do that. But the um, may, for, for the real time question, uh, it's still uh, uh, not clear what would be the way to go do. Is it really open data in real time or not? Uh, that that's a good question to to be asked. But um, uh, I don't have an answer yet. But uh, uh, we are. I have always been very open to collaboration. So uh, just uh, uh, sharing data openly for research for other systems. Uh, the only thing we didn't want was to have a, uh, a competing system that would really uh, make the, the current platform really not used anymore because other systems would use only our solution. Uh, so th this is why the read time is still not clear <laughs> what would be the point there. The way to go, but uh, it's still something to think about. Thank you. Can you?